Where do you draw the line? How bad does a criminal have to be before law enforcement refuses to use him as a snitch? We've seen it all. Bad guys set free to inform on their buddies, then going out and committing horrible crimes against innocent people. Well, now it has happened again. This time, a child and his father are the victims. Here's Katie Kim on special assignment. A little boy gives his dad a final kiss. Days earlier, he watched his dad gun down right before his eyes. There's nights where he's just crying and screaming because he's scared of, you know, what he saw, what he heard. Jason Estrada was shot and killed at his South Valley home last April. It took a statewide manhunt for deputies to find suspected shooter Edward Quintana. Investigators say things escalated when Estrada confronted Quintana about molesting his six-year-old son, the same boy who witnessed the shooting. Quintana sits behind bars awaiting trial for murder and sex abuse of a minor. He was a monster, you know. But it gets worse for the Estrada family. They say the reality of losing Estrada and the boy's innocence was only sinking in when a few months later they learned another secret. We've learned Quintana was a federal informant working drug investigations for the DEA. In fact, the family's attorney says he was a snitch at the time of Estrada's murder. This is pure and simple negligence on the part of DEA. Albuquerque attorney Erlinda Johnson, a former federal prosecutor, is representing the Estrada family. They've taken the first step in filing a lawsuit against the DEA and the Department of Justice, claiming the government failed to follow its own rules in screening and monitoring Quintana. One of the harsh realities of law enforcement is that to catch a criminal, sometimes you have to use a criminal. It's a delicate balance that comes with plenty of risks. In Quintana's case, it is unclear if DEA agents ran a required background check. If they had and found what we found, their own policy states Quintana's history should have set off some alarms. Should the DEA have signed up Edward Quintana as an informant in the first place? Well, my opinion is no. What red flags should they have caught? Well, number one, the fact that Edward Quintana had a very violent background. He was foreseeably violent. A search of Quintana's records turns up more than a dozen arrests, many of them for violent offenses. Twice in 2005, Quintana was charged with beating his wife. The second time, he used a gun to threaten her life. He was convicted of aggravated battery. Later that year, Quintana was charged with attempted murder for his role in the beating of a fellow jail inmate. But that case fell apart. In September 2011, BCSO busted him with a lot of heroin, a lot of cash, and three stolen guns. Quintana was facing up to 20 years if convicted in that drug case, but he was never indicted. Instead, we've learned he struck a deal and went to work for the feds, helping agents to bust drug rings in his hometown of Las Vegas. We understand he was working um, investigations with the DEA um, in 2011 and 2012. Johnson says Quintana was still an informant when he moved back to Albuquerque in 2012. That's when he moved in with the Estrada family. The two men knew each other, but the family doesn't know how. During that time is when he committed the unspeakable acts against the little boy. Johnson says the DEA had a responsibility to supervise Quintana and to warn the family of his violent past. Close monitoring, their, their control of an informant, that's one of the key components, is that they have to control their informants, and they didn't. But Quintana's arrangement with the feds raises questions about who the DEA is using as informants and how tight a leash they're keeping on them. It echoes a case that rocked the local DEA office in the 90s and, according to sources, spurred stricter requirements for snitches. The suspect is described as a Michael man Robinson was a convicted pedophile. He was working as a federal informant when he kidnapped and sexually assaulted two 10-year-old boys in the East Mountains in 1995. What similarities do you see there? Well, you have an informant who is essentially running loose um, with, it, without, with impunity, doing whatever he wanted, and you have victims who became um, sub, you know, prey to this, to this predator. The Fed settled with the family of one of Robinson's victims for $250,000. Obviously, DEA needs informants to work their cases. No one's disputing that. But Johnson says good policies and procedures are worthless if they're not followed. As a result of their negligence, a man is dead 
and a little boy's innocence has been taken away. We went to get the DEA side, but they denied our request for an interview. They wouldn't even confirm or deny whether Quintana was an informant. However, they sent us a statement saying in part, if the DEA learns that an informant has been involved in a violation of the law, DEA seeks to take immediate and appropriate action. We've learned Quintana was deactivated as a confidential informant the day after the murder. Estrada's sister says the DEA should have intervened long before then. To know that our government failed us and to know, you know, who knows it could happen to other families. On special assignment, Katie Kim, KRQE News 13. Edward Quintana is awaiting trial for murder and sex abuse. His attorney claims that Quintana shot Estrada in self-defense saying that Estrada came after Quintana with a knife.